Hello, Covenant family. Pastor John here to introduce Psalm 127. Now, you may recall that this is the psalm that a number of us have been memorizing uh, over the month of December. And so I would imagine that as I read this, many of you will be able to uh, repeat it by memory. And even if you haven't uh, fully memorized this psalm, I think that it's important to just spend some time meditating upon it. This is indeed a beautiful psalm. It's a psalm of Solomon. Let's listen closely. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. This psalm by Solomon deals with two primary topics. The topic of productivity and the topic of procreativity. The topic of work and the topic of children. And Solomon begins his psalm uh, on the topic of work by talking about problems with work. Uh, talking about this bread, a lyrically beautiful metaphor, the bread of anxious toil. Uh, the bread that we eat that has been earned by working, by the fruits of our labors, uh, that bread can, well, it can not always be sweet when it is accompanied by anxiety, by worry. And sometimes, while work can be a blessing, it can feel like a burden. Uh, well, Solomon is getting to the root of that problem at the very beginning of the psalm. Uh, he starts out and says, unless the Lord builds the house, or that Hebrew word could also be translated, if the Lord does not build the house. But the idea is the same, that the Lord is the one who provides for us. He is our provider. How does he provide for us? Well, he provides through the means of our work. Now, many would consider this to be a conflict to say that God provides for me through my work, uh, someone might argue, well, it's my work after all. And yet, that is to push against the idea, the biblical concept of God's provision and our dependence upon that provision. Or to put it another way, try providing for yourself if God does not provide the opportunity for work. If God does not provide the opportunity for, to stay with the metaphor of bread, the wheat and the farmer and the harvesting and the baking and so forth and so on. And so ultimately God is our provider and God provides for us through the means of work. But in addition to provision, so also God is our provider. It is in vain that or the watchman watches over the city in vain. Uh, this idea that somehow we're our own protector. If we have just enough of our own efforts or our own preparation or things of this nature, that we are our protector. But again, Solomon is teaching us here that the Lord is our protector. And so the watchman watches over the city in vain, meaning that if we think it is all according to our efforts and our works, well, we are self-deceived. Well, the remedy for the bread of anxious toil and the gift that God gives, as, the, as Solomon says, that he gives to his beloved sleep, a beautiful picture of how we rest in God's provision and God's protection. The remedy is, is to look first to the Lord, to be dependent upon the Lord and to seek the Lord's glory in our work and in our efforts. God is most glorified in us when we are most dependent upon him. The second part of the psalm then changes to the gift of children. 
the blessing of children. And Solomon says that, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. Uh, and, and some of us in our terminology may not be familiar that much with the word heritage. The Hebrew word there is the same as inheritance. Uh, children to their parents, to their grandparents, are an inheritance. Who gives this inheritance? Well, pause for just a moment and ask, is an inheritance earned? Is an inheritance something that we work for and receive like a paycheck? No, an inheritance comes as a gift, a relational gift. God, as our Heavenly Father, gives the gift of children, and they are an inheritance from him. The fruit of the womb, a reward. And the idea of reward there is not in the, in the sense of modern sense of that somehow you did something and then spontaneously there's this reward. Uh, but the idea is that it is a blessing. It is a benefit. Children are a reward in this sense. But also, Solomon includes the practical aspect of this. Uh, when we have children in our younger years, as we grow older, we grow more vulnerable, and we have needs of aid and protection. And God, as our protector, provides for us through the means of our children. Our children come to our need. And the last verse of this is sometimes somewhat elusive, where he says, he shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. But it need not be elusive because the gate was the place within ancient Israelite culture where disputes were settled, where legal matters were dealt with. And so it was a place where you would come to resolve a matter, especially if it was a matter that was brought against you, for example, in this case, by your enemy. In this sense, it is the children who come and help protect their father or their mother, and they are the ones who seek to help in a time of need. They become, to stay with this, the metaphor of this psalm, they become like, like sharpened arrows, uh, the more children, the better, Solomon says. They're like, like uh, arrows in a quiver, and they are the ones that God uses to help as the parents age. Well, you can see in, in all of this how rich this psalm is, but I want to leave you with a question. Why does Solomon combine work and children in the same psalm? It would seem as if Solomon has chosen to take two separate topics and combine them, for whatever reason, into one psalm. Well, there is a reason he does that, and we're going to look at that in more depth on this coming Sunday. So I pray that you will join us, that prior to coming you'll have read and, and meditated upon and, and even memorized this psalm, and that you will come prepared that we may worship together this coming Lord's Day. I hope to see you then. God bless you.